Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And today I want to talk to you about omega-6 fats. Now this is part three of a four-part series. If you want to go back to watch the other ones, we also talked about omega-9s and omega-7s. And I bet a lot of you didn't even know there was omega-9s and 7s, but there are. So we talked about the benefits of those two, what the sources are to get the best, best results. Now, this is all about omega-6. Now I have to admit, I've been dogging omega-6s for years, so maybe I'll redeem them a little bit today. So what are omega-6s? What are their benefits? Are there any benefits or really are they harmful? What is the story behind them and what are the best sources? Because there are good and bad sources and this is really where, when I was dogging them, this is where that was coming in because there are bad sources that could actually cause you a lot of harm. So you want to make sure you watch to the end because I'm going to give you those sources. I'm going to tell you where you want to get the best omega-6 fats and where you want to avoid the worst. So like I said, watch to the very end and of course make sure you like, you share, you comment and subscribe and make sure you click that little bell notification so you get notified every single time I do a video. And if you want to get in the best shape of your life, and you know my channel is really all about keto, we talk about keto a lot, and you want to get in the best shape of your life, get as healthy as possible, regulate your hormones, check out my keto course. It is by far the best course on the market. It is the most comprehensive. We have meal plans, we have shopping lists, we have motivation, we have inspiration. We have recipe guides. We have everything in it to make sure your keto program is a success so you get the best results possible. But anyway, let's get back to this. Like I said, this is part three of a four-part series on all the omega fats. So omega-6, so what are omega-6 fats anyway? So the way fats work is there's a carbon chain. So as you see here, there's all these carbons. And in this case, there's about 18 of them. So it's a pretty long carbon chain. And it's typically surrounded by hydrogens. There's a alpha and an omega end. Alpha is the beginning, omega is the end. Just the way it is in the Bible too. So over here we see all these carbons and they're all loaded up with hydrogens. In fact, what makes a fat saturated fat, you might ask, is when every single carbon has a hydrogen attached to it, just like all over here and down here. Now, you might notice in the middle here, there's something different. Where these arrows are, there's not hydrogens. Instead, there's these double bonds. It looks like equal signs. Those double bonds meaning it's a unsaturated fat. Now, unsaturated can be monounsaturated, like your sevens and your nines, but your polyunsaturated is like your six and your threes, okay? So your omega-6 and omega-3. So omega-6 is a polyunsaturated fat, which means it's got two double bonds. Now, what makes it an omega-6 is where that last double bond is. And in this case, it is six, five, six carbons from the end, okay? Six carbons from the omega, that's what makes it an omega-6 fat, okay? So as you can imagine, an omega-7 and an omega-9, the double bond is seven or nine carbons from the end. Just in case you wanted to know so you can impress your friends. Anyway, so let's get on with now. There's something about an omega-6 fat now that makes it a little different than the sevens and the nines, and that is that these are essential fats. And what that means is, you can't make it yourself. Your body can't produce it. So that means just like essential uh, amino acids, you have to get it from an outside source. You have to eat this, okay? So it has to be part of your food. So omega-6 fatty acids are essential, so you need to obtain them from your diet. Like I said, unlike non-essential fatty acids like number seven and number nine. Another thing is there's basically four types of omega-6 fatty acids. Well, we're looking at linoleic acid. Well, linoleic acid is shown to improve LDL cholesterol and insulin sensitivity like a lot of the other ones. So omega-7 and omega-9 had very similar properties like that. It was able to help with LDL cholesterol. And once again, if you're concerned about cholesterol and you wanna know a little bit more about LDL cholesterol, I did a video on that. Go back and watch that. I'll put the link down below so you can see that and you can learn a lot about how to read your LDL cholesterol results. Arachidonic acid, arachidonic acid is responsible for actually muscle inflammation, but not only that, it could also help with production of eicosanoids. Now an eicosanoid is this. These are signaling molecules that whenever your body is to start creating inflammation, any redness, any swelling, any tenderness, any pain, eicosanoids are signaling molecules that begin that process. Now, they help raise immunity and it also inflammatory responses in your body. Now, gamma-linoleic acid, 
The purpose of gamma linoleic acid is for conditions such as arthritis, nerve damage due to diabetes, eczema, high blood pressure, but I have to say there's really not a lot of scientific evidence proving all the different benefits of gamma linoleic acid. Now conjugated linoleic acid or CLA, now this one has a lot to do with weight loss. So this is the one that a lot of people are taking in supplement form because of its benefits in helping you burn fat. Some studies indicate that CLA can cause significant fat loss in humans. It may also improve body composition by reducing body fat and increasing muscle mass. So this one's a big one, like I say, Many times you will find this in supplements or you will hear people talk about CLA, okay? So now you know what it means. Now, one thing about omega-6 is they play an important role in your DNA expression. So this is very, very significant because of course, we know now that your environment has a lot to do with how your DNA is expressed. It's not just the fact that you might have certain genes and people tend to worry about that. I know you might be thinking about that yourself. Well, I've got bad genes, bad luck. My parents, you know, are always sick and so on. But it's really more important is how your genes are expressed. And we call that epigenetics. And epigenetics is very, very important because it really plays a bigger role than in your genes. What your genes do is they are affected by their environment. So your environment dictates which genes are turned on and off. So you can turn off genes for cancer, just like you can turn them on. You can turn off genes for heart disease, just like you can turn those on too. So this has a lot to do with gene expression. So it has to do with immune health and blood clotting. These fats can also help with the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis and dermatitis. So they can also help with inflammatory diseases. Now, there is something very important to know about how much omega-6 we take in in our diet. So typically, we take in too much. So unfortunately, we ate way too many omega-6, which is used so much in American diet. So as I say, in the standard American diet or the sad American diet, we tend to take in too much omega-6s. Now, this is where omega-6 becomes a problem. When your body becomes too omega-6 dominant, and when I say that, I'm talking about your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. That is critical. You have to make sure that it's in check. The proper amount is in a one to four ratio. I mean, you can maybe get it one to one, but typically one to fours are a great way to go. Too much omega-6 can raise your blood pressure lead to blood clots that can cause heart attack, stroke, and cause your body to retain water. So the standard American diet, unfortunately, is more in the lines of one to 50, okay? Not one to four, but one to 50. So we have way too much. Why? Because it's in all the corn oils. It's in all the soybeans. It's in all the different vegetable oils that we tend to use, the seed oils. And we're going to talk about that in a moment because that's where we're starting to get all really the bad sources. And the bad sources are everywhere and that's what's raising it up. So if you're eating chips and crackers, if you're eating cookies and cakes and things like that, you're getting too much of these omega-6 oils and that's what's starting to cause the inflammation and all the problems that we're talking about. So that's why I've been unfortunately dogging them for years because in the standard American diet or the SAD diet, it is too dominant in omega-6 and less omega-3. Where do you get the worst sources? Well, soybeans are a horrible source. You really want to stay away from soybeans. Soybeans are not good for us. They are very uh, estrogenic. They have a lot of xenoestrogens in it and these actually cause a lot of problems and they're hormone disruptors. They cause tremendous amounts of problems with hormones. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, what about people in Asia? They eat things like soybeans all the time. Well, they eat a different type of soybean. It's more fermented. It's not like we have in the United States where it's a very cheap crop to grow and as a result, we just make soy milk. We can make anything out of soy. You could take anything and mold soy and make it look like something else. So soybeans are in a lot of foods that you wouldn't even be aware of because they can be disguised so easily. Corn, that's another one. Corn is mainly GMO. 90% of the corn in the United States is all GMO, genetically modified organism corn. So you want to avoid this. Not only that, the way it's processed is very, very dangerous. We all know about high fructose corn syrup. Well, the corn oils are not good oils either. And these are your vegetable oils. I talked about in one of previous videos all about why you should not be using vegetable oils like your safflower and sunflower. Sunflowers are fine. I eat sunflower seeds all the time. Raw sunflower seeds are fantastic, but when they use them to take the oil and extract the oil, what they use is harmful chemicals, and these harmful chemicals and this heat extraction process to then 
take the oil out, then they have to bleach it, flavor it, take the smells out. It's too many chemicals involved in this process and they make oils get really, really bad. They're highly inflammatory. They're way too high in omega-6, which causes way too much inflammation in the body. So that's why, as I've said for years, I've been really downing these vegetable oils and omega-6 because the sources are bad. Now, there are good sources, and that's why I said you wanna to watch to the end because I'm gonna tell you now the good sources. Now, the best sources for omega-6 fats are your meat, especially grass-fed meat. Grass-fed meat is fantastic because remember, you're eating what the animal is eating. So if the animal is eating corn, if the animal is eating grain, if the animal is eating wheat, you're eating that too. So if you're eating Grass-fed cows. Grass-fed cows have a fantastic omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. That's the way you want it. So you're making sure that you're eating very anti-inflammatory cows. Poultry, same thing. If you have you know, chickens that are raised where they can go out and go and forage and get whatever they want, the worms and the grasses and things like that, much, much higher omega-3 profile than omega-6 because it's much, much better when it comes to the grass. Fish, same thing. Make sure you're having things like salmon, mackerel, uh, sardines, things like that where it's high, high, high quality oils. Eggs, same thing. Once again, cage-free, free range. That's what you want because you're gonna get a much better omega-3 to omega-6 profile. Nuts and seeds, also fantastic. Your walnuts, your macadamia nuts, things like that. So this is where you're getting all your best sources. So avoid the nut oils, avoid the you know, vegetable oils, and eat a lot more of these, the eggs, the nuts, the chicken, poultry, fish. Load up on that kind of stuff and you're gonna be doing a whole lot better. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If so, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. But more importantly, check out my other videos over here. If you like this one, I promise you're gonna love these. Well guys, I love and appreciate you. Have a blessed day. This is Dr. Nick. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.